isn't he wonderful?
Church and welcome to another session of online service. I'm so thankful that um, despite the uh, lockdown or despite the EMCO and anything, um, uh, we are still able to come together and meet virtually uh, as a church. And uh, yeah, so thankful for that. Thank you. Thank thank God for technology. You know, um, uh, and uh, it's been a wonderful opportunity for us, learning opportunity for us as a church. Know, to be able to find ways to meet meet the, together. The title of my sharing today uh, it will be um, faith uh, the trials, um, faith the trials. So um, I think this is a timely sharing. I think a, a timely reminder for all of us as well um, as we uh, come together as we go through this time of uh, the pandemic, and not only the pandemic, uh, how it had affected all our lives as individuals and as a church and as a community, whether it's economically, socially, mentally and physically as well. Um, some of us, some of us uh, have, have, have lost loved ones. Some of us have known people who have been uh, affected by the virus and then gone through tough times. Some of us, we know of people who are going through um, really challenging times, especially right now, the white flag movement uh, in, in, in Malaysia. is just so heartbreaking to see people going through such tough times. But um, I'm here to, you know, uh, in hope that we can be encouraged by the word of God, uh, that God is always with us, and He is um, here to 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 take good care of us and help us through challenging times. So the title of my sharing today is "Faith the Trials." And before we start, uh, let us uh, begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, let's pray. Father Lord in heaven, we just want to thank you for your grace and mercy. You are a gracious and merciful God. You are big, you are strong, you are almighty, you are holy, you are righteous, you are just. And apart from you, there's no one else who is like you, who can be like you, can and could, who can even be greater than you. There's no one else like you, for you are the one and only true living God. So, Lord, as we um, go into your word, uh, read your word, Lord, I pray that may you anoint me, anoint my lips and whatever words that have been used, may it be from you and whatever it is oh lord god may you use may your holy spirit guide us help us to understand your word and help us to apply your word into our lives to bring you glory in jesus name we pray amen amen okay so um the passage that we'll be looking at um this 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 morning it's um taken from james chapter 1 verse 2 to 4 and, uh, and, and, and verse uh, 12, um, it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, 
because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And in verse 12, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Amen. So in this, in this part of the scripture, James uh, chapter 1, uh, verse 2 to 4 and uh, verse 12, um, it's, it's, it's talking about, um, you know, James is uh, encouraging the Jewish, the, 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 his readers, basically the Jewish believers, you know, um, who are facing persecution, who are going through trials. And this is what he's, he's trying to encourage them uh, who are going through persecution. So before we even dive uh, even deeper and go and go further, let, let us just look at uh, the background of the book of James. So the book of James is written by James, uh, the brothers of, uh, believed to be the brothers of Jesus, okay, and um, he is actually writing to the Jewish believers outside of Israel. Uh, if you know that uh, in in Israel itself, there's not only believers in Israel, but all around the Mediterranean area and all around it. Uh, the, the, the area they are Jewish believers as well. Um, they, they are, it is believed that um, you know uh, they they have been scattered all over those places, and they are believers over there. All right, and also um, for James, he is also writing. So he's writing to these G Jewish believers and encouraging them who are going through persecution. As you know, during that time, it is a Roman Empire. The Roman Empire was in power, and being a Christian during then is not. It's not, it's not something, you know, what, like what we are going through now. Being a Christian, then you, you go through persecution because of the culture of Christianity. And then there's a clashing between those two cultures. And of course, going against the Roman Empire well, isn't a really good, isn't really ideal. Um, and, you, they and, and they experience persecution. And apart from that as well, they, James is also writing to the Jewish believers to encourage them to stay true to the ways of the Lord. Um, in those those times and that, during that time, those Jewish believers outside there, uh, they call them the diaspora Jews uh, or the, 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 the believers. They are, they are also in the presence of so many cultures that are opposing to the Christian, the Christian, uh, Christian culture. I mean, there are so many things that are ungodly and um, there's so many, so much temptations as well. So James is addressing issues like, you know, uh, hearing and doing the word. You don't only hear the word, but you do it. And then also to watch your word, taming the, 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 the tongue, you know, whatever you say um, carries a lot of weight. And then uh, James also touched about on humility and honesty, being humble, being honest. And then James also warned about against worldliness uh, and, and warns against uh, riches, you know, don't get too, too caught up with that. So these are basically a, 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 a rough picture of what the book of James is about. So coming back to our verse, uh, the scripture that we are focusing this morning, um, it says again, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials. It didn't say if you face trials, it says whenever you face trials. In other words, trials will always be there in our lives. It will, it will always be there. It's not if, but it's a matter of when. So when you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith testing of your faith. So this is a process they are going through. Produces perseverance. It produces character. It, it, it helps us to grow. All right? we, go, we, go, we go stronger by going through trials. Um, there's a saying that goes, what doesn't kill makes you stronger. Um, it, 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 it is along those lines. Um, but then again, um, you know, going through trials is one way we go stronger. I mean, think, think back about a time when you were a little kid or when you were younger. You know when you and those and think about all those challenges and trials that you face. Thinking back right now, you're thinking, ah, yeah, those times easy lah, compared to compared to now. Of course, back then when you were maybe you were a student, maybe you're younger, you're like, oh yeah, this is the like, it's the biggest challenge of my life. I can't go through it at all. But thinking back, you're like, okay, I grew, I grew through that. I I went through that. I grew in the process. And of course, trials, as we know in life, it gets tougher and tougher. Uh, but at the same time, we also grow stronger in the process. And then in verse 4, it says, Let perseverance finish its works so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in, uh, not lacking anything. So the words that are highlighted yellow, this is like kind of like the end goal or something that we are, uh, 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 how to say, looking forward to. 
And then in verse 12, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. Perseveres under trial. So you're going through trials. Because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life. Again, something that we are going, uh, going towards to. A crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. We see in this, in this, in this scripture that we are going through trials for something. You're not going through trials for nothing. Because a lot of times when we are going through trials, we think like, ah, oh, yeah, it's pointless. Lah. You know, it's like never-ending one. I don't, I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. I do not see hope. I do not see anything. So uh, there's a, a lot of people when they go through trials. I mean, some of us, I, I myself had, had gone through that. I've gone through trials and then I'm like, when I don't see a, a, the light at the end of the tunnel, I don't see a, an, an end, something like that. I feel hopeless. I feel that I cannot go on. And when I feel I do not want, cannot go on, I just stay where I am and then stay down and stay depressed or something like that. But of course, that is not true for us as believers. We know that that is a, end of the light, that is a light at the end of the tunnel or there is something so much more that we are going towards to, they are going, we are going for. And that is getting that crown of life. And that is, uh, how to say, eternity uh, with God. And that is where we are going and that is our hope. And because we have hope, we can continue to persevere on in faith um, through trials. So faith, the trials. Coming back to the title of the sharing, faith, the trials. So the keywords here that we can focus on, persevere, uh, sorry, persevere, faith, trials, eternal life. These are the few keywords to, 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 to take note. And these are the things that is easier said than done, of course. I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I mean, reading this is like, okay, easier said than done, but... Then again, you will ask the question, so how? How do I persevere in faith? I mean, the Bible says persevere in faith. Okay, yes, but how? So before going further, let us just recap what is being said. So for uh, the scripture that we have, looked, we have looked at, so what is James actually trying to, con what, what is James trying to convey to the Jewish believers out there? So basically he's just saying, telling them, and I, and I think this is what he's saying, persevere through trials in faith so that you will grow in the Lord, eventually reaping the reward of eternal life. And that is what we are going for, eternal life. All right? So, so that is a message from James to the Jewish believers, the readers, the audience of this, uh, this, uh, the book of James. So what does this mean for us? Okay? Of course, we know that we are not, we are not Jewish. Huh? Uh, unless some of you are, <laughs> we are not Jewish, okay, and then we are we are we are not living during the time of the Roman Empire. We are not back then. We are not. We are living here in Malaysia, and some of us are uh, different uh, other countries as well. But we are not at that that region, and we are not at that during that time or period of time. But then again, we are still we are also going through trials or challenges in our lives, in our own lives, whether you are young or old. So it could be your studies, it could be your job, it could be the current situation right now during the pandemic where there are a lot of stresses to your family, to your finances, to the way of life, to your health. So what does it mean for us? So for us, it means be patient and persevere through the trials that comes in our lives in, in faith, in faith, so that we can grow in the Lord and eventually reap the reward of our eternal life. All right. So James chapter 5, verse 7, he says, Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crops, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. It is interesting that James used, picked the analogy of, a, 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 a selected the analogy of a farmer who waited patiently. Of course, the farmer, as I mean, I, I'm not a farmer myself. I, uh, the only time that I can I, I farm or planted things is those green beans that grew into taugay or something like that. But um, then again. I think the concept is there. Farmers, they plant, they, they reap, they, they sow, they, they put a, in a lot of uh, effort into planting their crops and they got to wait patiently. You know, those, their, their crops don't, don't uh, how to say, are not produced overnight or in a weeks or it, it, it goes up to months and maybe years. I mean, we are living in the culture of the now. Everything I want it now. Microwave oven, few minutes done, your food is done. You know, uh, fast food now, uh, everything now. But then again, um, James here took the, 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 the analogy of, uh, used the analogy of farmer waiting patiently. And then when that farmer waited patiently, 
in faith as well in faith as well because we didn't know how the crops would turn out in faith as well but eventually um, you know getting its yield and then James chapter 5 verse 11 it says as you know we count that blessed uh, those who have persevered you have heard of Job's uh, perseverance and have seen what the Lord's uh, uh, Lord finally brought about the Lord is full of compassion and mercy again James is using a, a, another uh, example and he picked this uh, a Bible character Job and we know that in Job, he had persevered. He gone through. He gone through quite a tough time. Uh, I mean, he he gone through quite a quite a challenging time for him. He had everything. They lost everything, and then he go, He went through those trials. He went through through those uh, those situations, um, those tough situations, those trials and challenges in life. But he remained patient. He remained, he remained faithful to the Lord, and he persevered on. And of course, eventually, um, uh, how to say Job. Uh, was able to get thing, get what he had lost back and then uh, yielded um, what he had lost. So, um, how do we persevere in faith? How do we persevere in faith? And just by looking at the book of James itself, okay, we can have three observations here, but I added another last observation. So there are four things that we can, you know, what we can do to persevere in faith. So, um, first, of, first of all, pray. Pray. In the book of James, uh, chapter 5, verse 13 to 16, it says, Anyone among you in trouble, let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing song of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith um, will make sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Of course, this, what James is talking, uh, you know, trying to tell, say here is more of, you know, praying for each other when you're sick and all that. But of course, you see the, the main message here, praying for one another. Pray. And, and of course, so how do we persevere in faith? Pray for yourself. Pray for each other. You see someone in, who are in need, a brother and sister who is in need, going through a tough time, pray for that person. And I like it how uh, in our church group, um, how to say we have a, a, a WhatsApp, we have WhatsApp groups or in our, ch lo uh, in our local circles, we share those who have, um, we, we, we inform you know, the church of who is going through tough times or who is going through um, challenging times. And we, we encourage one another to pray. And it's so encouraging to see um, people respond and tell, tell him, okay, I'm praying for you, you know, uh, we'll pray for you. And um, it's, just, just, it's just, just, just this unity and solidarity that we see that is so encouraging and edifying. So uh, how do we persevere in faith? The first one is pray. Next, uh, how do we persevere in faith? Ask. In James chapter 1, verse 5 to 6, it says, If any one of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who will uh, generously uh, he will give generously to all without finding a fault and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. Ask. Ask God for wisdom. Ask God for help. Ask. Um, and then uh, in chapter, James chapter 3, verse 17, it says, But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure and peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Ask God. I mean, there are a lot of times where uh, when we're going through trials, we sometimes, some of us, me, myself included, I'm guilty of it. I keep my mouth shut. I don't want to share with anybody, you know. Maybe it's, it's, it's my ego. I like, I, I don't want to trouble people or I don't want to, um, you know, I don't want to have this, uh, have this image of, oh, I, 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 image that I'm, I'm going through tough times or, or something like that. But ask. Ask God for wisdom, and the wisdom and God's wisdom. I tell you, as has been said, shared by James chapter three verse seventeen. It is um, that comes from heaven is first of all pure and peace loving, considerate, submissive. You don't ask for worldly wisdom; you ask for godly wisdom. A lot of times, worldly wisdom do not work. It will work for a while, but in the long term, it doesn't work. But godly wisdom is something all different. So ask for godly wisdom. Ask for help. All right. So next, so that's us. First of all, it was uh, pray. Second, ask. Third, help. Help. 
So in James chapter 5, verse 14 to 16, and then in, chapter, in, in verse 20, 19 to 20, um, again, it's, I think it's a repetition of it, but um, it says here in verse 16, it says, Therefore confess your sins to each other, all right, and pray for each other, so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Okay, and in verse 19 and 20, it says, My brothers and sisters, if any one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring that person back, Remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the arrows of the ways will save them from death and cover all the multitude of sin. So far, we have just looked at all the things, all these observations in the context of the book of James. And of course, uh, for this third one, help, James, we can see the, 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 what is being implied here is helping one another. And it also ties back to asking help and also praying to, uh, for each other. We have one another. We do not need to go through these trials these challenges in life alone we are not in this alone you are not alone you know there are so many other people going through the same thing as you uh, we, we might not know it but if you were to just ask for help okay uh, it would be extended it can be extended to you and also for us who are seeing people who are in need help especially uh, c coming back to this white flag movement um, we have seen people you know uh, putting our white flags in, in front of their homes if you see those those homes, and I can I have seen you know WhatsApp messages going around, you know um, not not only them but whoever who are in need, help them. This is challenging times and this is is it, it is a big opportunity, especially for the church, the local church, to help the local community community wherever you are. God has placed you uh, to help each other. And if you are going through trials, ask for help. All right, so. Three things uh, we have we done. Uh, we have uh, mentioned, pray, ask, help. Okay, and so far um, we are not. So far we have um, look it look at all this all this observation in the context of the book of James. But of course the last one it should be number four <laughs> typo there. But the last one is the how to say to, to look at it at, at as in a bigger in a bigger picture. Focus. Focus. Focus on the end goal. Focus on where we are going. Because the thing is, it is so easy, we go through trials and challenges, and our focus is only on the problems that we see ahead of us. It is so easy to just um, look at the, 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 the issue, and then just dwell on the issue, uh, and just not, you know, just continue dwelling in it. And then when you dwell in it, it makes you stress, it makes you, it, it discourages you, it, it, it just brings you down. And I've been guilty of this as well. I mean, uh, all of us, we go through challenges. And I, I'm more of a, how to say, not, not so much of an optimistic, uh, optimist, but more of a pessimist. So any time that is tough and there are challenges, I always focus on, you know, uh, oh yeah, this, 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 this is just challenging. I just focus on this issue and then um, it is just, it, it brings me down, it ties me down, it wears me down. But of course, um, when I'm reminded of what God has done, okay, what God has done, and that is to just take a step back and focus on God, focus on where we are heading, you know, and that, that, that makes so much difference. So, um, if you look at the last verse, the last paragraph there, Romans chapter 8, verse 18, it says, Can I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed in us. I consider that our present suffering right now, what we are going through right now, is not worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed in us. In other words, all of us know as believers where we are going and where we are heading. And where we are heading is eternal fellowship with God. And where we are heading is, is, is eternal life. And that is our hope. And that is our focus. And if we keep our focus on that, I tell you, anything that we're going through here on earth, it won't be easy. It won't be easy. But we will have the strength to go through that because we know our focus. Our, we know the end goal. We know what is to come. And it is eternal fellowship with God and eternal life with God. All right, so um, just summarizing what we have, uh, what what we have shared, uh, what we had been shared. 
be patient and persevere through the trials that comes in your life uh, in faith so that we can grow in the Lord and eventually reap the, uh, reap the reward of eternal life. How? Ask. Eh, sorry, how? Pray. Pray for each other. Pray for yourself. Pray and ask. Second, ask. Ask God for wisdom. Ask God for His uh, godly wisdom so that you know what, how, what to do to be able to you know, go through these uh, trying, uh, challenging times. Help. Help. Help one another. You see someone who need, you need help. If you need help, ask for help. Pray for help. Lastly, focus. Focus on the end goal. Focus on what is to come. You see, when, when someone runs a race, runs a marathon, you focus on the end goal. You want to, you want to get there. You want to get to the finishing line. And if you just focus on, oh, I'm tired, oh, I'm out of breath, oh, I'm so hot and everything, it will be, it will, you will have a tough time just finishing the race itself. But you focus on the end goal. Your mind is focused on that. And it, it's, you, 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 don't, you don't focus so much on what you're going through right now, going through this tough time. So it, it will be possible and it will, you will persevere on towards that finishing line. So in totality, in our, in our walk with God, Okay. We are all believers in Christ. Christ, uh, Jesus Christ, God has sent His Son Jesus to die on the cross for us. And because of that, uh, because of that, all our sins are forgiven. And because of that, we have this Holy, the Holy Spirit who is now indwelling in us. And because of that, we have the strength to go through trials, to face trials. Alright? We are not, we, and we are, we are also called a child of God, child of God. You know, you know, it's not any any other, you know, not any other child. It's, we are all called child of God. That is who we are. Our Father is God. All right. And if our Father is God, you know, God is just big and, and it's just almighty. And there's so many things that can, that nothing is impossible for God. All things are possible in God. And if and, and what we can do is just continue trusting in God that He will bring us through. Alright? So, that is, the, that is my sharing for, for all of us today, this morning. Faith, the trials. We are all um, God's children. And uh, although you are, for those of you who are going through challenging times right now, I might not understand what you're going through. And maybe your friends might not going through, might not really fully understand what you're going through right now. You might say, "Hey, Jim, you will never understand because you you never in my situation." Yes, I admit, and we all admit. But God knows what you're going through, in and out. God knows what you're going through. God knows what you need. And it, it's it's a bit. Sometimes it is uh, how to say, it is easier said than than done. Um, but I encourage each and every one of us to continue to just persevere on, push on. Think back of those times when you have gone through challenging times. Those, those times that you think, oh, yeah, I, I, I just can't get through this. But you got through it eventually. Because why? You have God, because God has helped you through those times. Think back of those times and see, and, and think back of, be reminded of what God had done for you. All of us, um, do not do not need to worry in a sense because God is God is with us so brothers and sisters in Christ um, whatever you're going through this morning I just pray that all of us will have the strength to continue to push on um, to persevere and to have our eyes set on uh, and the angle set on God so that we, we will be able to uh, persevere through trials in life in faith and for those of you who do not who who are hearing the name of God or name uh, or hearing the, the name of Jesus for the first time in your, in your life maybe you know, you, you just you just browsing through videos online you stumble upon this message um, and if you're going through trials, you're going through challenging times in your life, and you want that strength to be able to sustain you through that, 
and you have not known God at all before this, or may, you might have heard your friends or someone who have shared to you about God or Jesus, but you know you never know um, before this. And but if you want that this morning, I can encourage you, I can I encourage you all to also uh, pray with us as well. Um, so I will lead us in two prayers. First of all, for those who are going through trials, and second for those who want to accept Christ into their life. All right. So um, let's pray. Father Lord in heaven, you are good, you are great, you are awesome and magnificent. You are caring, you are loving, you are merciful and gracious. Lord, we all know that life is tough, life is hard, but you are good you, for, because you are merciful and gracious. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for us. And because of that, Lord, we have this freedom in you, strength in you, hope in you in you so that we are able to push on and persevere through the trials of life in faith because we know that you are with us you are with us every step of the way and we know where we are going and that is eternal fellowship with you so lord help us to set our eyes fixed and focused on you help us to be to to pray to to, to just hold on to you help us to ask for help when, when, we, when we require when it's needed help us to also give us the boldness to help one another as well of who I need so Lord I pray that you sustain us and uh, help us through this, this time so that Lord your name will be glorified your name will be lifted up Lord, in all of this and for those of you who want to receive Christ as their personal Lord and Saviour just pray this prayer with me dear Lord Jesus I thank you for what you have done on the cross. Because of what you have done on the cross, my sins are all forgiven. I am sorry for what I have done and I repent from all my si of all my sins. Lord Jesus, come, come into my life, come into my heart and help me to walk according to your ways so that your name will be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So thank you church thank you for thank you for listening and I hope that you are blessed by this uh, this this sharing for those of you who need ministry time all right uh, for those of you who need to you know um, need to be prayed for we have rooms we have breakup rooms um, uh, after the service and it will be um, how to say it will be uh, it will be shared by Miss uh, Miss Farm, our sister Farm. so there are some ministry rooms if you require prayer you can go there and be prayed for and for all of us, um, continue to help each other throughout this time and have a blessed Sunday. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless.